Hi everyone, Joe Jim here with part 3 of the Backbone.js application walkthrough. This time we'll be converting the HTML templates down here into external files that we load asynchronously. Uh, the first thing you'll see though is an additional uh, template that's actually the same content as what we have up here for that shows up right away in the application. The reason we're converting this also into a template is because uh, we're also going to be making another view that displays this template. If we go back and we look at the application in uh, Chrome, we click this view and then we'll click back and the view didn't change back to the home page even though we're at the the root URL. And that's what we're going to change. Like so and other than just adding a view, it's just a couple extra lines of code. And we'll see how this works now. Just commented it out. So now if we click back, it goes back. So I'm going to be working on that part first. Uh, so first of course was to create the template. Now we need to create the extra view. So we're going to be calling this view the start view. And of course this is created uh, by extending backbones view as usual. So first we'll do the initialize function. And for this we're going to be actually doing a little bit of overkill. So we're still going to be using the underscore template engine even though uh, all we're going to be doing is loading straight HTML. Anyway, so we're going to pull in the HTML from that template and load it into underscore's templating engine. And then we'll just create a render function that will uh, insert that HTML into the element here. So we'll do this dot template execute. And then of course like all the other ones we return this dot L for our re render functions. So we're going to save this into the views as start.js. Next thing we need to do is add the script into the HTML file, which we actually already did just in preparation. Then we need to well, that's all we need to do for this video for adding that extra view. So now we'll actually go and move on to converting these templates into external files. So first thing we need to do is just grab the HTML out of these things. So control X that. I'll create a new file. Just paste it right on in. And we'll get rid of the tabs. We're going to save this under templates as start.html. So that's our first template. Well, let's go ahead and close that. We'll get this next template, which is even more ridiculously simple. We'll save this one as header.html. Notice I'm using the same here as the name of the file name, which isn't absolutely necessary, but it helps. And I just set it up that way so I can remember everything better. Get rid of these tabs. Oh, that one in there. I'll save this one as. Whoop. Wine details dot html and the last one this will be a wine list item wine 
list item.html. All right, so now we've got all our templates converted to HTML files. We can go ahead, come in here, and just delete these templates. Now, if you're noticing here, there's a file called utils.js. That is going to be the file we're creating next. And that one just cre uh, contains the file that we or the code that we need to load in the templates asynchronously. So all you really need to know is that all the templates are stored in this object right here, and here we load them asynchronously. Uh, we'll say this is a JavaScript file right away. Utils.js. So now we can see the highlighting. If you look in here, it uses the templates folder right away on the .html file extension. So this utility is completely geared to work with our application. It is not really useful unless you actually have the templates folder and all your files end with .html. So we could go back and create this and make it more um, generic so we can send in the folder name and whatnot, but there isn't uh, a real good reason to do that if we're just using it for this application. So we're going to leave it as is. So that's all you need to know. It loads it for via Ajax, each and every template, and then you, you call load templates to do that. And then later on when we actually want to use the template, we use the get function to re pull it from this object array, your object. So then we actually are going to use load templates one time at the beginning of the application to load all of the templates, and then we use get to pull them in to the view. So we're going to actually show you how or how we do this. So in the main.js, you know, we already have our view prototype close function, which we'll be using in the next video. Um, in this and then down here we're going to have our router application, all the main logic, and then at, after that we do TPL load templates, and we're just going to create an array of strings of the template file names. List item. And then after that, we're just going to have a function. Inside of this function is where we actually start the application running. So it doesn't start until all the templates are loaded. So that's how we load the templates in. So now we need to go into all of our um, views and convert them over to the new template syntax. So we're going to keep we're just going to tpl dot get get rid of that hash and it's done. That's all we need to do for all these views. So go ahead and copy this. Oh, I forgot to undo that. So in here we already got these uh, tpl dot get and now we're using the wine details instead of pulling in the HTML template. We've got it in here too. And we've got it in this one. So it makes code slightly shorter and it doesn't rely on your index.html file having these template files in, the, in here. So that's what the great thing about keeping that, that, them external is. Um, and then you can also, like later on, use require.js or something to pull them in as a dependency. Anyway, well that's all there is to show you this time. Uh, later this week I should finish the application, at least to the point that it's up and running. Uh, then after that I plan on throwing in one more video into the series to convert everything to AMD and use require.js to control the dependencies and everything. Uh, rather than loading all these scripts down here at the bottom, 
we'll just need to load require JS and it will handle the rest. Uh, I hope that you're learning something and that all this backbone stuff is starting to stick into your brain. Uh, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, God bless, and happy coding.